everybody, I'm H. Nicole. If you're new and if you're not new, hey boo. I post lifestyle tips, story times, and anything else I want to put on my channel. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we're going to do another girl talk video where I go over questions that you cannot ask your mom. You're too afraid to ask your mom these questions. So I'm going to answer them for you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and comment and like if you do like this video. First question, how do you feel about birth control? So me personally, I feel like it does depend on the woman and if you want to be on birth control or not. And also which kind of birth control you want to go on is also up to you. I just feel like sometimes birth control can affect your mood. It can also be the reason why you become depressed. I've heard a lot about the pill and how it can affect like your periods and some girls don't have periods for long periods of times and yeah that might seem exciting at first because you don't have to worry about your menstrual cycle or you spotting or whatever but then sometimes it can be scary because if you're sexually active you might not know if you're pregnant or not or whatever you know. I just feel like it depends on the woman and if you decide to get on birth control, are you ready for the effects of it, you know, the mood swings, depression, you not having your period and all other things, like, it comes a lot with that. So now me personally, I'd rather use um, precautions as, you know, condoms and being safe that way instead of being put on a birth control that can affect my mood or have me depressed or gain weight or things like that but that's my personal preference do you think everyone should go through a whole phase so um yeah i think everyone should go through it like their whole phase but earlier on in their life meaning like either right at the end of your high school years and then your early 20s but once you hit like maybe 23 then you should like cut the whole phase you know like start to grow up and mature and think about your life and settle down and not be so wild but yeah i think everyone should have a whole phase and get it out because once you like hit like 25 and up then you know you want to be more stable and you want to have a you know a good relationship someone that you could build with instead of having this person that person and this person and then you're kind of like um then you're kind of lonely when you're hitting 30 and 35 so yeah i think everyone should have a whole phase and get that shit out y'all and you know enjoy your life so you don't regret it when you're older and regret not going out and having fun and sleeping with this person and that person be safe but yeah enjoy your life and the early years of your life you know so yeah how to talk to a guy with confidence so how i talk to a guy with confidence is well one now it's kind of different because I'm super like super square and sober I don't really go out I don't drink I don't do nothing basically but back when I used to party a lot and drink and have fun and all that it was a lot easier because you know that liquor courage you know would be like whatever and um, you'd be excited to go up to a guy that you like or a girl that you like and be like I'm gonna just talk to them because I think they're cute and I'm feeling good right now so it was a lot easier for me back then now today i that i don't party i don't drink and i don't like you know be walling out if i like a guy and i need that confidence to go up to him you guys i'm just super casual and you know kind of like have a like super casual compliment the guy or something or the girl that you like and then um you know and be kind of like touchy-feely if you kind of know them like you know put your hand on their arm on their shoulder you know what i mean you know i love a nice shoulder you know um smile look like you're having a good time just talking to them and also i mean like if you really like a guy you're gonna try to make a way to like kind of talk to them but if you're like super super shy and you just don't have the confidence to talk to a guy that you think is really hot or a girl that you think is really hot then honestly just look at them look their way smile at them and if they smile back then you walk past them put a little twist in your booty girl and make sure they see that walk when you walk by and kind of just glance a little bit don't be too thirsty or whatever because you know nobody really wants a whore but anyways yeah make it known a little bit that you kind of you know feel them in some type of way or whatever did your first time hurt or was it just uncomfortable 
So you guys, for all my ladies who are like holding it out for marriage or you're just, you know, haven't gotten to that point where you're having SEX yet, um, to answer this question, it is very uncomfortable, but if you're with the right person, it's not as uncomfortable and it's not gonna be painful. Of course, you know, this is a tip for you. If it is your first time and the guy is experienced or whatever, you know, make sure that you guys do some type of foreplay before you do it for the first time because then your body is going to react. Your body's going to react to it and be more relaxed. And when a woman's body is relaxed and she's turned on mentally, you guys are doing foreplay before all that. It kind of makes it easier. For he just does it and he doesn't turn you on before all of that, you know, before y'all do it. Then yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable and painful and your nerves are going to be up and you're not going to be relaxed. So basically, make sure you guys do some foreplay before. Make sure your body is relax and you'll have a better time for your first time and it won't be painful or as uncomfortable but either way your first time is going to be uncomfortable you've never done it before so yeah how do you feel about menstrual cups so you guys i have used menstrual cups a couple times and this is when i either you know was wearing a bikini it was like in the summertime and i couldn't really like wear either a pad and I didn't want to wear a tampon because like what the heck like I didn't want you know the string to pop out or have to um, cut the string or stuff the string up you know TMI whatever so menstrual cups are probably only good for that but to be honest with you guys menstrual cups are very it menstrual cups can be very messy and if you're like not a messy person if you care about having all this on your hands and all that stuff then menstrual cups are probably not for you but i mean menstrual cups could be used for anything honestly um i know some girls still have intercourse when they uh use a menstrual cup or whatever and some girls use it because they like it uh better they feel that it's more natural they don't want to use a tampon or they don't want to sit on a pad for a few hours so it is a preference i honestly don't use menstrual cups at all anymore like i said i've used them in the past for when i was going swimming or wearing a bikini and all that but that's the only time i have ever used menstrual cups i only use either pads or tampons how to avoid razor bumps so how you can avoid razor bumps is one get a wax girl no if you don't get waxing or a sugar brazilian or whatever then i would recommend that you use a good razor for some reason i just feel like women razors are not as good as men's razors so um if you happen to stumble over a good woman's razor get that razor stick with that make sure you're shaving in the same direction of your hair that's growing and um also exfoliate after you're done shaving, your spot that you're shaving is sensitive, whether that's your vajayjay or if that's your underpit, whatever. Two days after you're um, done shaving, exfoliate your area so that um, you don't get ingrowns or anything like that because ingrowns are not cute and you, know, you don't want to be irritated down there or even under your underpit. So a good razor, make sure you exfoliate. If you want to exfoliate with um, a white soap, don't get any scented wash or any scented soap. Use a white soap to exfoliate. Rub that white soap on and um, exfoliate afterwards. And you don't have to do it for five minutes or 10 minutes. Do it for a little bit. Don't go super hard. Is it normal to have one boob bigger than the other? Yeah, girl, it's very normal to have one boob bigger than the other. Um, there's nothing wrong with you unless your one boob is like abnormally bigger than the other one Like you're wearing a double D cup on one boob and then your other one's like a B cup Sums up but normally yes one boob is always bigger than the other one um, Very normal is vaginal discharge normal Absolutely very normal. I know there's a couple young girls watching me and if you ever see discharge in your panties, girl, that's very normal. Um, it should just be clear. If you see any like discolored discharge coming from you um, on your panties, then you probably do need to go see your doctor and get checked and you know figure out what that really is. But having discharge on your panties, clear discharge, is very normal. 
and you shouldn't be worried about that so how do you deal with stretch marks so okay you guys honestly when I was younger and I was growing up and maturing and I was getting my hips and my boobs um, I was getting a little bit of stretch marks and I was just like oh my god this is like weird this is embarrassing like is this normal and I would be like kind of try to hide my stretch marks now I don't give a damn and nobody gives a damn honestly how do I deal with my stretch marks I would just say be be okay with your stretch marks you know it's pretty normal and um, it's nothing to be ashamed of and I remember um, that comedian, you guys know this comedian, Cal Williams, I remember one of his stand-up comedies, he said, if a girl has stretch marks, either she was small and got big or she was big and got small. So, it's very normal, guys don't care. In my situation, I was super skinny and um, tiny, petite or whatever, and I was growing up as a woman, and I grew my boobs, I grew my hips, I grew my shape, basically. So, and Cat Williams, um, reference I was small and got a little bit bigger but in a good way so it's fine you guys I would say um learn to accept it because it is part of being a woman and growing and if you're a man with stretch marks women don't care we don't care just treat us good and give us food that's all we care about how do you know if you're good at kissing so <laughs> Fun story, you guys. When I was younger, I didn't really, really start dating until later on in life. Like, I'm going to say, like, I didn't have a real boyfriend until I was 16, like 15, 16 years old. And um, I had my first kids probably, like, 8th grade, ninth grade. But it was, like, very, like, not really into it. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I would say, you know, honestly, you guys, every person that I have kissed, kisses differently. There's no, like, right or wrong way to kiss. But, you know, everyone has their kind of way to kiss. I've kissed guys who kiss really, really super aggressive and hard. And I've kissed guys who um, kiss very sensual and soft. And, you know, honestly, I like the very sensual and soft unless it's some hardcore. We about to get into it, y'all yeah kiss me all aggressive and grab my neck and choke me no I'm just kidding but yeah every person kisses differently so I wouldn't say um, there's no right or wrong way like to kiss a person and you just have to kiss how you like and if you're a sensual person you you like to kiss all soft and all gentle and you know be very in the moment then do that you know there's no right or wrong way to kiss a person and you always hear people like i'm a good kisser i'm a good kisser blah 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 and they turn out to like be like shit and aggressive and want to pull your hair and shit yeah don't be that person kiss how you want to kiss having sex on the first date <laughs> so how i feel about having sex on the first date is you know do you girl if you want to like bang this guy on the first date y'all feeling the vibe you feeling good do it you guys know i'm really big on supporting my girls and doing what you want and being very pro-choice so i feel like if you want to bang out a dude on the first date do it but honestly me today i don't really like have sex on the first date unless one i know you i've known you for a long time and we were friends and, and then we decided to like turn into something else and i know you then maybe, but if I have just met a guy and we're getting to know each other and you take me out to eat and then you invite me to your house or something, I'm probably not going to want to go and I'm probably going to just leave you at that date. Like, okay, thank you for dinner. Have a good day. But for anybody who wants to bang out on the first date and um, you're feeling that vibe again, like I said, go off and do it, whatever. I know girls who have had sex on the first date and they turn that into a relationship and it's still with that guy. So honestly, like do what you want. If a guy doesn't want to be with you after that, then fuck him, do it again to another guy who wants to be with you. Like, is it normal for your period to be inconsistent? So like I said before in the birth control question that I had um, answered earlier, if you are on birth control, then yeah, your period might be inconsistent and you might not even get a period sometimes when on birth control. But if you're not on birth control and you are doing everything that you normally do and your period is inconsistent, I feel like it's very normal for your period to be late maybe one day or 
late two days, right? But how I track my period is I actually use a period tracker and it tells me what days I'm supposed to be on my period, what days I'm going to be off, whatever. So if you feel like your period is too inconsistent, but you're not too short, firstly get an app, a period app that you can download from your phone and start tracking your period. Now if your period is very inconsistent and you're not getting it for like a month or a couple of weeks, then something's off go to your doctor but also just so you guys know um sometimes uh having sex knocks off your period as well so if you're having sex like a week or two before your period then sometimes that'll knock it off i feel like your body has its own mind so I, will, I honestly believe that if your body doesn't like the person that you're having intercourse with, it would tell you, you know? It'll knock off your period and be like, girl, this, he ain't the one, you know? So yeah, anyway, stuff like that. So if you're on birth control, yes, it can be inconsistent. If you're having sex around the time that you're supposed to be eating your period, like a week or two before, it may knock off your period a couple days. But I think it's very normal for your period to be a day or two late. As long as you get your period the week that you're expecting it or that your period tracker app is telling you, then you should be fine. You shouldn't worry about it too much. Boy shorts, thongs, or regular panties, aka granny panties, y'all. So, for my preference, <laughs> I like boy shorts, number one, you know. Granny panties when I'm on my cycle because it's more comfortable and if something happens, I can, you know, just throw those away. I have no problem with just getting rid of those and it's comfortable to sleep in. Thongs only for, you know, if I'm trying to feel good about myself. If I got me a little, like, date coming up and I want to look cute and, you know, show off my booty and my curves with my boo or something, then I'll wear a thong. But honestly, cotton panties are the best for your JJ. you know. You don't want to get a yeast infection because you're wearing satin thongs all the time and it's rising up you and all that and making you feel uncomfortable and your JJ does not like that. So yeah, if you're gonna wear thongs, try to find thongs that are like cotton. And um, boy shorts and granny panties are, you know, not always the cutest, but they're the most comfortable. And your JJ likes that the best. Now you honestly could find some really cute boy shorts or some, you know, some boy shorts that like curve your booty and make them look super cute. But if you're a girl who wears thongs all the time, I definitely wouldn't recommend that one and i definitely wouldn't recommend that you wear satin or any other material that's not cotton is a tampon supposed to be painful so if a tampon is painful for you girl you put it in wrong so um basically if you put a tampon in you and it's uncomfortable or painful then you put it in wrong take it out do it over again or just wear a pad but no, a tampon is not supposed to be painful for you. It's not supposed to feel dry or uncomfortable. Do you have hacks for periods? I actually do have a lot of hacks for periods because my periods are very painful. They make me the most moodiest that I've ever, you know, could be. So what I would say, what I would recommend if you are on your period or you're about to go on your period is one stock up on any junk food that you want and honestly for me if i'm on a weight loss journey or a fitness journey which i am right now and i'm on my cycle and i'm like well i don't want to eat this um oreo cookies or this junk food because it's gonna make me gain weight you guys your weight goes up and down anyways when you're on your cycle so honestly like when I'm on mine, I don't care. I'm going to eat those Oreos, those hot Cheetos, and that candy, and I don't care. So, a few hacks that I have for you guys is, one, get some chocolate. There was a time, there's a few times where I was on my period and I was having the most painful cramps. And you guys, I ended up eating some Oreos and some chocolate, some Reese's, and my freaking, um, my freaking period pains went away. So, chocolate does help your period pain so stock up on that also um, a lot of water and um, a lot of people would say get like a heating pad I don't know anyone who says a heating pad but back in the day that was like a thing to do but heating pads are actually bad for your body 
so instead of a heating pad what you can do is get like a temperature room water bottle and just hold it there on your um on your stomach or wherever you know that you're feeling the pain at another period hack is if you're on your period but you have to go to work or you are going to the gym and you're being very active somewhere you're not going to be able to change your pad or your tampon what you can do is use a tampon and a pad right so wear your granny panties or your boy shorts put a pad on that but also use a tampon so you're double protected and also for my active girls or anyone who is down for this period hack is cardio actually does help your period hack so you could do like a little bit of walking on the treadmill or any type of movement also you guys ibuprofen is like up there for me too like i used to be really against like um advil tylenol like pain relievers but ibuprofen really knocks my period pains out and also yoga you know y'all i got into yoga like a few years back i haven't done it in a minute but yoga positions and doing yoga really 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 helps out and if you go to the gym and go to a sauna that helps you out too those were the hacks I have that um, I use for me personally when I'm on my period and like my pains are like horrible, which the first two days are the most painful. Those hacks actually help me out when I'm on my cycle. How do you find yourself after a bad breakup? So, how do you find yourself after a bad breakup, right? Okay. So if you're going through a toxic relationship and you finally got out of it, girl, put your all in this relationship. And, you know, sometimes I think certain people, when they get in a relationship, they actually, they give their all to their relationship without even, you know, having that commitment from the other person. So when it does end, it's like your world is crumbling down and you don't know what to do because you just gave this person your everything and your life revolved around this person. So the tips I would give for anyone who is trying to find themselves after a bad breakup is go back and remember what you did before you met that person, what things made you happy, you know what I mean? Anytime I have gotten out of a bad breakup or a relationship ended so badly, firstly, you actually have to feel all the feelings that you're feeling. So if you're sad, feel sad cry about it if you're a person who doesn't cry in front of people cry before you go to bed and let it out cry in the shower that sounds so bad cry in the shower but cry by yourself let it out because if you don't you're gonna be at work you're gonna be in the mall you're gonna be talking to somebody randomly or a cute guy coming up to you trying to holler at you and you're gonna just end up crying because you're not over your ex or something so feel those emotions if you're angry be fucking angry like let that anger out and that's the first thing you should do is let your emotions show like get them out and then two if you used to work out you used to be all about your fitness and about yourself and your health get back to that start watching youtube videos start watching my youtube videos and get your mind off of that breakup you know what i mean um, start hanging out with friends that you didn't have a chance to hang out with because you were so caught up with this relationship, you know? So do things that make you happy and that's gonna get your mind off of that. But you definitely need to feel those feelings first. Get back to what made you happy and what you did before this bad breakup. I would say though, you guys, because I've done this when I was younger and, um, you know, I had a bad breakup or whatever and I didn't let my emotions out. Like, I'm not a real big crier in front of people. So if I do cry in front of people, it's like a real thing. Like, I'm really down and out or whatever. But back when I was younger and I had a bad breakup and I didn't feel those emotions, I didn't let them out. I went out with my girls and we were drinking and having fun. Guess what happened? You know, I started drinking, got drunk and was crying, y'all, with my homegirls and just being upset. And that's embarrassing and never a good thing to do while you're partying, looking cute with your girls in the club. Like, who wants to be that girl in the bathroom crying because you miss your ex or something? You know what I mean? So that's a bad horror story. What the fuck? Um, but yeah, don't be like that. Let those emotions out. And the next one is um, hand in hand with the one I just answered. How to love yourself again. So how to love yourself again, whether that's after a bad breakup or um, you're going through something bad, you know, or you're just depressed, you're not feeling like yourself. Um, 
I would say personally, if I'm going through like, if I'm feeling like depressed and I'm going through something bad or my life just feels like it's unbalanced, what I do is one, I, this is me personally, I don't know if this is like the right thing to do or whatever. I isolate myself for a little bit because anytime I'm not like feeling myself or I'm feeling depressed or angry or sad for no reason or whatever, and I'm just like not really like, you know, all in love with myself as I normally am, not to sound like arrogant or anything, but what I do is I isolate myself because I don't wanna be around people and put that energy on that person and go off on a person who really didn't deserve it. So what I normally do, I isolate myself, I figure out what, why I'm feeling like this, and once I do that, I go and talk to somebody. I find a person that I fully trust and go, you know what, I just been not feeling myself and I think this is why. Then it's out to someone that you trust and that you know that's not gonna put your business out there. Nobody wants to tell someone something and then it comes back to you and then like everyone knows your business or whatever. So, you know, it's okay to isolate yourself and separate yourself for a little bit and then find someone that you fully trust and talk to that person and um, vent out to that person and tell them how you feel because I think everyone needs somebody that they trust and talk to. And especially if you have just gotten out of a bad breakup or you know you're just going through something and you feel like you're all alone. So you know, find someone that you trust and to talk to. And I know everyone's gonna like hate this next answer, but start working out you guys and start caring about yourself and your body because if you look good then you feel good and i honestly believe that um i've heard that plenty of times growing up like oh if you wear this makeup this cute outfit you're gonna feel good if you work out and you like your shape you're gonna feel good and i truly believe that so you know get your mental together then start working out because if you haven't checked out my last video, which I'll link it somewhere on this video, um, where I did a challenge of me working out for two weeks straight, that changed my whole mood, my whole vibe, or whatever. Um, working out does help with your mental, and it does help with your energy and your mood, and it does help with depression and all that kind of stuff. So I would do really recommend getting, you know, into fitness if you are trying to find your self and finding how to love yourself and the last one you guys how do you know if you're in love you know i had to put like a little love question up in here or whatever but how do you know if you're in love y'all i always think anytime i have a crush i'm like oh i love him he's the one for me he's my king i'm gonna marry him so i don't even know if i should be answering this question because every guy i think is cute and every guy i have a crush on i'd be like falling in love but i would say how do you know you're in love and you're like dating a person and you know everything's going good and you're like do i just really like this person or do i love him right so i think in my experience how you find out if you love a person is if you care about their well-being you know um if they're not with you right are they okay if they're going out with their friends and partying with their friends i hope they make it home safe not if oh my God, he's gonna go off and go with the girl or he's gonna um, play me, he's gonna cheat on me. You're not even worried about that. You're worried about his well-being. Is he safe? I hope he makes a home okay. Or if you're um, you're wondering if they ate that day, cause y'all, I'm a foodie and I normally only care if I eat that day. Like, I don't care if you ate, like, you know? But if I start thinking like, okay, did you, did you cook for yourself? Did you eat today? I probably really kind of like you or love you or something you know um, I guess other reasons like how you know like that you are in love is if you know you want to protect that person you want to make sure that they are okay um, what else you want to be around this person but you're okay sitting in like silence like if you guys are both watching a movie or TV you are okay with not being cuddled up and you don't always have to be up under that person. Also, another way that I learned that um, when I'm in love and how I know I'm in love is 
their pain is my pain, right? So like, if something bad happened to them, then I feel that pain. Or if someone in their family has passed away or something, I feel that pain, like as if it was happening to me, you know? Or if something happened with their job or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, their pain is my pain and I feel for them. Also, another one, you guys, and this one is probably um, an unpopular answer. And unfortunately, like for some people, even if your significant other plays you and they're like, they have cheated on you or whatever, and some people will be like, you can't be in love with this person, like look how they treat you or whatever. Honestly, you can still be in love with someone who treats you bad. Like I said, other things I said before, how like if you feel their pain, if you care about their well-being or if they ate or if they're being okay and taken care of, even if they have played you or treated you like shit, if you still feel all those things, you're, you're in love. Should you go back to that person if they're treating you like crap? No, probably not. But you can still be in love with someone that you're not with. And that's just like a whole nother topic, but. So, okay, you guys, that was the last of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting me. And click the link down below to subscribe and turn on all your post notifications so you know every time that I post a new video. Like this video, it does help my channel out a lot. Comment down below if either you agree with me or you have any other input to put on any of the questions that I had in this video. And I'll check you guys out in the next video. Bye.